together. So I've created this little yin practice for you. It's a little mini yin class, just so that you can get back onto your mat and maybe do a few variations on some poses that maybe you're used to doing them in another way and I've added a little bit of variety. Also, if you need to modify, if you need to come out of a pose, I know in this time maybe sometimes we've been a little more sedentary, so it, anything you need to do to change your workout, come back into a child's pose, um, maybe challenge yourself in different ways, maybe do more repetitions. Many of the poses I'm going to be holding for less time than I would in a traditional class just to get you moving. So if you want to hold it longer, and of course you can add a long Shavasana at the end. So this is just going to be just a Kickstarter class. All right, let's get ready to, to yin out. So let's start in the tabletop. Wrists underneath shoulders, hips even under the knees, and then let's move into a cow and then round into a cat back. And move into a cow and round into a cat back. We can do it again. Move into a cow, round into a cat back. And now come back into your neutral. Walk your knees back a little bit and rock back and forth and back and forth. And keep rocking back and forth with your tabletop and then come back into your neutral again. And let's step back that right leg and reach the left arm out in front. And when you do this, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen here. Lift up, reach it to the sky, maybe revolving it around in a circle. And however you want to do this, you might wanna bend your elbow more, keep that right leg strong, keep breathing in and out, Ujjayi. And then go ahead and set that hand down. And let's move back that left foot Stabilize through your core, lift and stretch out that right arm, keeping that arm plugged into the socket, pulling the core in, and then maybe lifting it up and circling it around, and circling it around. And as we do that, it's sort of an organic movement as you're moving it around in the circle. A few more times, circling it around, and then back down to your tabletops. From here, tuck your toes and move into a downward facing dog. As we move into downward facing dog, let's see if we can tread our feet a little, bending your knees. Tuck your belly in, pull your rib cage upward, your sitting bones upward. So you're moving your whole body up towards the apex of your buttocks. And treading out, maybe you've been sitting a lot lately. Maybe your whole workout regimen has changed so just drawing yourself up into your down dog. At any point that you want to come out of down dog or back down to a child's pose, do so also. And then take a deep breath here. Bend your knees. Slide them forward. Sit back over your heels. Inhale, lift to sky. Reach up. Look into those hands. Try to lengthen the spine. Again, lifting the rib cage off of your hip bones. Exhale. Bringing the knuckles back. Separate your knees. Hip distance. Just give it a little gentle collarbone opening stretch. Press down with the tops of your feet. Push your hip bones forward. Lengthen and open your chest, maybe making a bigger back bend if your body's ready. Inhale up to sky, reach up. We're gonna do some kneeling sweeps. Sweep back and sweep up and sweep back and sweep up and sweep back and sweep up and sweep back and sweep, and sweep all the way up reach over for that right wrist and lean to your left side so your side bending lateral stretch looking up into that top arm and then come back up palms holding beach ball strong arms cactus arms give it a little twist side to side inhale up sweep up to sky hold that left wrist with the right hand softly moving it into that lateral bend Maybe looking up to your top arm, giving it that little neck stretch, opening up your sternocleidomastoid, trying to really take that whole neck side of the face. Stretch out a little bit there. Lift it back up to your beach ball. Exhale, hands down. Bring them back down to tabletop. Walk the knees back into your full tabletop. Engage your belly, tuck your toes, and let's just do a little challenge with your abs. So float here. 
So floating tabletop. And if this feels good to you, you can stay here for a little bit longer and breathe, tuck the belly in. Or if this is too much for either your wrists, your low back, your knees, you can come back down and anytime come into your child's pose. Okay, so let's go from here, bring your knees down and move back into your child's pose for just a moment. Now we're gonna add a little extra warm up challenge to our tabletops. So come back up. And again, you could stay in regular tabletop. Tuck the toes, you can stay here. You can come up and float and then come back down. Or let's take the right knee, tap the elbow. Tap the elbow. Tap the elbow. Tap the elbow. One more. Tap the elbow. Toes down, knees down, child's toes rest. And you could always do one of them or two of them. Tuck the toes, come up, float. Squeeze into your belly. Tap other side. Tap. 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 Let's do one more. Tap. And bring it down. Knees down. Child's pose back. Inhale back to your tabletop. Lift up with that right arm. We're just going to swing it under but not come to a full thread the needle because we're going to slide back up and under. Slide back up and under. One more. Slide back up and under and up into the mat. Okay. Round into your cat, drop your head, turn your head from side to side, stretching, letting your crown of your head dangle, tucking your chin in towards your chest, and come back to your neutral, lift up with left, underneath, left, underneath, left arm, underneath, left arm, deep breathe through these, underneath, left arm, bring it down. All right, this time you're gonna come forward, bring your knees in, sit back, bring your hands back, and let's give it a little quad stretch. So if this is too much for you back in this position with your fingers facing your toes, lift up your thighs, let your head drop back, lengthen, deep breathe. Lift your thighs a little more if you can. Always come out if you need to. Don't pinch in your shoulders, don't pinch, and don't let your wrist bear all this weight. You should be lifting with your thighs. Exhale, hips come back down. If you can, you're going to sweep, sweep, walk the feet forward into a reverse tabletop. So, and then bringing your buttocks down. If that was too much to bring the knees out from under like that, swing them around. Inhale back up from staff. Namaste. Big breath again, inhale, lift. Exhale, forward fold. So you could do your forward fold to your toes, or if you're tighter there, you could put your strap around your feet, which I encourage the use of our straps. So if you're using your strap, sometimes it gives you even a greater stretch because you're moving that sternum forward, pulling those wing bones into the back. Long, deep breaths here. Rib cage expanding, shoulders down away from the ears. All right, slowly, either your strap around your foot or hands on that foot. So if you're using your strap, you're lifting it up, or you could be holding with your hands. Either one, you're trying to lift through that rib cage, but say you're using your strap. And then lightly, we're gonna take it out to the left side. So left foot out to left side, breathing. Back in, cross it over. And here, you're going to be doing a hug. Marichyasana variation, looking over your back left shoulder. And then coming from there, another deep breath. And back to center. Bring your foot back up. Rock it, Hindolasana. Hindolasana. And then bring it back down. See if you can float it back down into the mat. Inhale up, exhale forward fold. Again, you can use that strap or not use the strap, your choice. Bring the chest forward, and especially if you're tighter, it might be that you want to lengthen even more. And sometimes this is just the challenge of pulling that rib cage forward, 
lengthening just a little more. Try it with both. Maybe if you have a strap, you don't have a strap, use a towel. And then you can bring up and out with that right leg, trying to lengthen your spine, not lift the left buttocks. So it's kind of an, a variation on your Arda Upavishta Konasana. And then bring it forward and float it down and inhale the sky. Exhale Namaste. Let's swing it back around again. Bring your feet back around to your tabletop, knees to tabletop. And round your back into cat. And reverse into cow. Round into your cat. Tucking your belly and letting your head go. Reverse into your cow. Bring your chest forward, head forward. Head neutral, tuck your toes, push up and back. Downward facing dog. Lift up that right foot to the sky and we're just gonna step it forward. So three-legged dog, step it forward. If you don't like three-legged dog, you have an option there to just slide and step the foot forward. Drop your back knee. And so you're in the beginning of King Arthur pose or a kneeling lunge position. So lifting up. And if this feels uncomfortable to you in any way on your knee or in your groin, back it off some. You want to try to keep your knee, your front knee, basically somewhere over your ankle, not out to the side and not forward. Good. Exhale. Let's take it over to a twist with noose hands. So your palms together, working over that side, up to your top elbow, broaden across your collarbones, and then bring it back to center. Walk the foot out, turn the knee out, give it a little rock there. So you're on the pinky toe side of the foot, deepening the breath. And then bring it back to kneeling, rock a little bit. I like to move between poses that are more intense when you're starting, especially a new plane or new muscle group in the body. Tuck your toes, move up and back, tread it out, down dog tread, spine is long, deep breaths. And let's lift up the left foot to the sky, step it forward. Again, you can just slide it forward and you drop that back knee and you want that angle on that back leg. So you don't want the back leg here. If you see that, you want the stretch in the front side of the hip flexor here, in the groin. You want to feel that stretch. So come back where you can in this. And you don't want too much weight on that bottom hand. Now can we bring it around to your noose? And you might feel different on one side than the other. Lengthening. Looking up to your top elbow, broadening across your shoulders. I like to take several breaths and keep trying to open more and more and more and more. And then come back to center. Let's sweep up. Loop to sky, like you're holding a beach ball between your hands, long breaths. Exhale, hands down, walk that foot out to the outer corner. Give it a little rock again on this side. So you're just pushing forward back. Maybe you're completely on that pinky toe side of that foot. Maybe not, maybe your foot has to stay more flat. You're trying to let that part of the foot, the ankle foot connection, or the taluses and all that, that connection of that area, open up a little bit more. Maybe you take it to a little dorsi flex and plantar flex the foot, test it out in both directions, and then slide it back. Come back to your child's pose. And then inhale back up. Come to your down dog. Again, we're using down dog as a connection in our yin for traction. Draw your belly in, belly neutral here. Long deep breaths. And then we're gonna slide in with our right knee. So you're gonna take your right knee, slide it in, okay, and engage through your back left thigh. And when we move, we're gonna try to move in one movement with our back left leg. So you're gonna cupcake your fingers so you're really light 
lengthen, move one movement to bring the foot forward. Sitting back over that heel. Now that might be too intense for some. You might need a block underneath here. So you could, and I'm gonna show you with the block, you could take a block and have it ready over here next to you. And then when you slide your foot, you sit back on that block. So, it, or maybe slightly less, maybe you have a pad, a kneeling pad of some sort or a towel rolled up. Inhale up. This becomes really intense, so that's why we did the uh, other movement first. Let's come over, looking to the side, breathing, looking over that back shoulder. It's a pretty intense pose, I think. And then come back to center, slide up into your Ujjanasana. Separate your feet, bend your knees, one, two, one, two. And then walk it back to your down dog, try them out. And then from here, you're going to come in with your knees. So you're gonna slide your left knee and you're gonna cupcake and bring that right foot forward and sit down. So you're on the other side. So if you needed to, you're gonna put that block underneath. If not, you're gonna sit. So this is intense right here, just being upright and over this knee and with the stretch you're feeling on that knee in this hand. Okay, let's come over and you could have your elbow position here or you could have a yana mudra position and just cupcaking your fingers behind. Try not to put a lot of weight on that back hand, opening the shoulders, coming around to that twist. A few breaths. And then come back to center, hands, tuck your toes, come up. Let's find that feet separated, forward fold, grab your elbows, dangle, sway a little bit side to side. Maybe see if you can ragdoll it a little bit side to side. Get your left hand down, reach up with your right, lengthen spine, drop it down and lift up. and bring it down, bring your feet together, come to your tiptoe, slide back, hug your knee, look over your back arm, it's that variation on Marici here on this side, so you can use it either as a warm up or as a reprieve coming out of something. Just a very gentle spinal twist. You could do this in between poses too if you're working on a twist series. Come back to the center, bring both feet out, come back to your staff, inhale up, exhale forward fold. Lengthen, and then bring your arms out and coming back, curling using your abs, coming all the way back into the mat. Lift the arms to the sky, have a deep breath here, long deep breath. Inhale, engage, curl up part way, part way. Now peel up one vertebra, try them all the way up. I'm gonna scoot a little bit forward. All right, so we're gonna do that again, curling back, tucking the belly, all the way down, arms go overhead. And namaste hands at heart center. Okay, if you have a block with you, grab your block. I want you to be able to use your blocks here. If you don't have a yoga block, you can take something else in between your hands, something lightweight that you can hold on to. So it's good to have that little reference point up there. So a little box or something you can use. Hold on to your block and bring your right knee in and just touch your shin or your ankle wherever you can right there. And then reach your arm long and take your block and touch your shin or ankle wherever you can right there. You might be here, you might be here, all right? You might be lifting up and bring it back. This, this is warm up again. Maybe you're getting farther. Maybe you're getting to the toe. And down. Other side. Lifting up. Toe. And down. Okay, now you're going to take the block and put it on your thigh. Put it on your right thigh. Put your right forearm on it. Lift up with your left hand behind your head. And you're going to have your thumb up here. And you're going to come up and twist into that thumb and come down. So a little core work here. Twist up into that thumb and come down. Don't pinch on your neck or your shoulder. 
twist up into that thumb and come down. One more, twist up into that thumb and come down. Release, set the block down. Bring your left knee up, thread the needle here. So you're bringing your hands around, threading the needle. Rock it a little bit side to side. Feet to the sky, nose to knees. Little pike, nose to knees again, little squeeze. Exhale, feet down. Go ahead and windshield wiper the feet. Now when you do your ab connection work for yin, I really believe that the core moves everything. Moves all the levers in your body, saves your low back, helps protect your knees, helps you with your upper shoulder girdle and being able to not slump forward, strengthens all of that. So we, I like to do core work in all of my yin classes. I don't believe that yin just means we lay on the floor and are super bendy for long periods of time. I think it's important to use the yin style of poses and use them efficiently so that the body becomes stronger and longer and more mobile. Elbow out on that right side, okay? And you've got that thumb up, so you've got a guy, but you might not be getting up to the thumb. You might be coming part of the way. Don't torque your neck. Come up and breathe out and then open. 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 One more time and breathe out and then open. Okay, and then take the block, set it down, cross your ankle, thread the needle on this side. Sometimes people tell me their IT bands in that or their leg or their thigh. It, they're feeling it only in that. So just you want to wiggle around whatever you need to do to come out. So you always want to reprieve something and feel that circulatory system working. Maybe even taking a happy baby, bringing the knees down and rocking. And then walking on the ceiling. And then come up. You're gonna swing up to Sukhasana, so swing up cross-legged. Inhale the sky. Little baby spinal twist, Sukhasana twist to your left, looking over your shoulder. Little baby Sukhasana twist to your right. Just kind of unwinding the body. Come back to center. Extend the legs. Staff, inhale up. Take it forward, Paschimottanasana. So here's your full Paschimo. Lengthening. Crown of the head toward toes. Inhale all the way up, exhale, namaste. We're gonna change our position here. So we're gonna swing around. And we're gonna have one leg out and the other knee bent, but in the angle of Konasana. So you have an angle. So if this foot was all the way out, it would be big V, Konasana, big angle. And this is sort of a John Yu leg, that inner to groin leg. And then inhale up. And we're going to use the stretch. Turn toward your left and move your fingers so they're toward framing where that left knee is. And then walk it out. Now, as you walk it out, lengthen your spine and keep revolving that outer thigh on the right and pressing down through that right glute. So you don't want to try to walk out and pull your arm too far out of that glenhumeral joint. You wanna keep them tucked in. So you're moving, trying to lengthen the spine. And especially this is a little bit of a lateral bend as it's a forward flexion. Breathe, and it's a groin opener. It's really nice. Hamstring opener, groin opener. A Little bit of an IT band if you're tighter there, you might have to pad underneath this knee. And then slide it back. Take that foot out, wiggle the toes around, find an open V position. Inhale, lift. Deep breath, namaste hands. Let's stay in this open V and press up. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Look up into those hands, deep, long breaths. Exhale, hands down. Let's take that foot around, that right foot, 
Now open your V. Bring that foot into the groin and open your V. So wiggle that heel up. Also, toes should be facing up, and you're trying to keep this leg grounded. Now, it might be even as much as your knee is up this much. If your knee's up very much, and especially if you're feeling too much tightness, you can pad underneath it with a block or a spacer underneath or a knee pad underneath. So you pull that heel into groin, lengthen, lift up, twist over to that right side. And again, then you remind that outer hip to revolve back down as you lengthen and, and kind of stretch your whole spine over that right leg, deepening the breath. Keep breathing. This is a very grounded pose, so you don't have to be reaching all the way out. You might be here. I'm going, whew, I'm feeling it all over. So we're listening to our body's feedback more than trying to achieve some point in space. It's more about what we feel in the body and using all the appropriate muscle groups to connect with our bandhas, our locks in the body, and protect our joints. Back up. Let's bring that leg in. Take it back to Sukhasana. And bring your hands next to the sides of your buttocks. Lengthen your spine. Lean your head over to that left side. Now bring the hand over and give it a little head stretch to the side, maybe looking up a little bit and then maybe down a little bit. So really stretching the side from the ear down the sternocleidal all the way down. And then back up, inhale up and take your head over to that right side. You might find one side's a little tighter. Maybe looking up a little bit, maybe down. But keep, continue to feel that stretch all the way down, all the way down that side of the neck. And then back to center. And then pivot around bringing your over the top of your cross leg. And now when you bring it to back to tabletop, over the top, that might be too much for some of you. So you might wanna just swing it around. Okay, we're gonna rock again, rock, rock. Nice. And then you're gonna stretch out that left leg again and bring it up, bend the knee, lift, squeeze your butt and tap it back down. Squeeze your butt and tap it back down. Squeeze your butt and tap it back down. Squeeze your butt and hold. So there's a point to this. You could, you could uh, put your, take your buttocks back down to your heel. You could put a ball behind the back of your knee or a block behind the back of the knee and the calf to just give you some extra, extra emphasis on that squeeze. But you want to strengthen through your glutes and your thighs and stretching out with that right hand. We're gonna come back to tiger pose, so it's a back bend. You're gonna reach back, find the foot, lift it up, and maybe taking a little twist with that tiger pose. Looking up on that right side, picking that toe up. Now the foot could be very low, it could be down here. You could come out, you could put a strap around the foot to bind it and hold it. And don't put all your weight into your bottom left hand. Exhale, bring it down. Scoot back into your child's pose. Take a huge deep breath. Take as many breaths as you need between these poses. And wiggle in whatever fashion that you need to. All right, move it forward again. Let's rock a little bit. So really this is a gentle yin movement. Tiger's a pretty big pose because it's a back bend and a bind and it uses shoulders, low back, hips. But it's a beautiful pose and it can be modified to a little gentler version by using that strap or not bringing the foot up all the way. Okay, we're tucking there, reaching out with that left, bend the knee, reach it up, tap it down. Reach it up, a little bit harder challenge, and down. Reach it up, tap it down. So whenever you can use several planes of your body to really practice balance and control and strength, it's gonna be helpful in the movement of your whole body through space. Okay, hold that extension. Reach back, find the foot. Maybe you throw a strap around that foot. Maybe you don't. Maybe the foot's very low. Maybe it's higher. Do not pinch your low back. You wanna lengthen through your lumbar spine. Maybe you take it into the twist where you're looking up over that left shoulder. If that becomes too much, your gaze can be down. Breathe, breathe. Maybe you're breathing into it and you feel your body release just that little bit more into the back bend and into the twist. Watch your shoulder. You don't want to try to reach for that foot 
and in some way injure your shoulder or strain your shoulder. Okay, bring it back out and down. And try not to ever plop out of a pose. Bring it to a wide knee child's pose. And by that I mean, sometimes we come out of a pose and we just, just let everything go, whoosh, boom, and we hit the mat. So coming out of a pose and entering into the pose should be just as mindful. Stretching out, moving your hips back, fingers out, long, wide knee child's pose. Wide knee. Child's pose, sukhmalasana, feeling that malasana. And then coming back up, and coming back into your tabletop, round your back into cat, reverse into cow, rounding into cat, reversing into cow. Good, come back to your neutral. All right, so we're gonna come down with our left forearm and out with your right toe. Now this is a balance in itself, yeah? It really is. Cupcake your fingers, lift up with that foot. Now turn your palm so that your arm, your bottom arm is parallel to the front edge of your mat and lift up top arm to sky and hold. So forearm side plank. If you want, you can do some taps down and up I'm on grass right now, and it's very uneven grass, <laughs> and it's a little bit of a challenge, as if you were standing on a pillow. It's kind of cool. So you're, I'm really working all of my core muscles to tap up and down. Okay, reach back and, and bind. So partridge pose, binding in a different way. So this is still that quad stretch, but this is what gets tight when we see it a lot. And I've heard that a lot of you are watching Netflix day and night. <laughs> so... Nothing wrong with finding some entertainment, but when we are sitting too long, our bodies pay a toll. All right, reach it back out, come back down, and sitting back. And then coming back up, coming down with that right, pressing back with the left, and maybe just holding that, maybe lifting it up, find the balance there. Once you find your balance challenge, you're going to lift up that top arm, trying to get it, ugh, work through your core, work through that strength. Maybe tapping a little, up and down, up and down, maybe squeezing that hip, you try to get it, hip height squeeze, hip height squeeze. A few more of those. Mm -hmm. Turn your palm, have your hand be parallel, sometimes that's a little bit more stability. You can do it either way. I think this is a little bit more stability, but try it both ways and see what you think. All right, bringing the hand back for your partridge. I like to have my arm parallel, in, especially in partridge, so I can really lift my side waist and really feel that quad stretch without feeling that I'm at all compromising my rotator cuff. One more deep breath. Exhale, bring the knee down. Sit back and breathe. And inhale, come up, tuck the toes into your down dog, tread it out. Hold your down dog, maybe do a little bit of a dolphin pose. Now dolphin, here's that gray area yin pose. It is definitely a baby inversion, like down dog is but it is also an excellent upper back stretch, hamstring stretch. And you can just let your head dangle or you can look in between your arms. You can turn your head from side to side, kind of giving it a little no, no, no. And you can bring your head up and tuck the chin slowly, always slow with the neck. Maybe giving it a yes, yes, yes. And breathe, holding that dolphin. Maybe starting to rest your heels a little bit lower there. Maybe not. Maybe you're in this and you're going, oh, I need to come down. That's okay. Come down into your tabletop knees or go into your child's pose. Exhale, knees come down. Inhale, let's sweep all the way up. Yeah, exhale, namaste. And so we're going to use two blocks here. We're going to work toward our camel poses. So we're going to bring 
a block on each side of your ankles. Now, if you don't have a block, whatever you have that you can stack up there, you could do two big cans or something that you put your fingers on, or like I said, boxes, but you wanna be able to bring your fingers to something, if, especially if you have a, a tighter back, or you could stay with the beginning of the pose, which in the beginning of Ustrasana will be hands to your buttocks, the sacral area, top of the sacral area, thighs moving forward, chest lifting up and moving forward, elbows moving back, long deep breaths, lengthening your spine. So that's beginning camel, and it has tremendous benefits on its own. Inhale, come back up to sky. Okay, we're gonna try half camel. So you're gonna do the same hips moving forward and your right hand comes back and maybe it sets on a block. Maybe it sets on the very top of the block. You're still moving your hips forward. Maybe it stays here on your buttocks. Maybe for some of you that have done camel for a while, you go down to your heel and maybe you take a bigger back bend as you lean back. But any of those versions, if it starts to be too pinchy in the back, come up. Engage your belly as you come up. Slide up, bring both hands to hips, circle around. Mm -hmm. Maybe take a tabletop here and rock a little bit. And then come back up. So if you have the one block, you're gonna put it on the other side or your big giant, those big giant cans, soup cans. Okay, push your hips forward. Good. And then roll back, maybe going to the block on its side, maybe going to the block on its end, maybe going back to the foot, maybe tucking your toes. But if you're tucking your toes, tuck both, and you can go back to a tuck heel or full version, kind of lifting up and reaching back, and lengthening your spine. Create space, feel freedom in the pose. Wherever you are in the pose, you should feel freedom in the pose. Not like it's pinching. And you could practice this pose several times, working up to getting into the half kettle. Okay, back up, using your core, and namaste hands, fingers forward. Reach back into a full child's pose here. And maybe because we did that Arda, that half kettle, one on each side, maybe taking a little right side because you might have one side tighter than the other, right side, child's pose. And then over, left side, child's pose. And you might feel like, oh, I need to stay in that a little longer. And that's okay too. Kind of listen to your body as we move from place to place. And then come back to middle. And then come up to your tabletop again, tuck your toes it up move into down dog I like down dog as a traction pose and at first when you're learning down dog a lot of people say oh well that's not very yin because down dog is part of a sun salutation and it is an inversion and it takes strength to do it yes if we don't work strength in our yin poses if we're only working the stretchy stretchy bendy stuff we're doing our body a disservice we need to be as flexible as we are strong we need to be as mobile as we can be still and engaged so it's very important to be able to move through space but yet hold strong posture it's very important to be able to stretch it out and also to strengthen it so we have to think of all those aspects that's how our body really does move all right we're going to move into um, a pigeon pose oh joy joy <laughs> so many people are just you know, just can't handle pigeon pose because it's an IT band stretch and it is a big pose. All right, we're again gonna slide right foot to the sky, bring it forward, bring your knee forward, slide your knee so that it goes behind where your right wrist is. And I want you to look at what's going on with your outer IT band, your outer thigh on your right leg. I want you to push that thigh down. Now, most of you, and I'm gonna find my block here, most of you, will be lifted to some fashion. I would rather have you put your hip on that block so that you have a parallel to the edge of the mat thigh rather than have you be like this in your pigeon because rolling it out in pigeon here is not pigeon. You stop stretching that IT band and we need to stretch the IT band. So if the thigh won't come down to the mat, whatever amount of space, maybe taking and rolling up that towel or blanket underneath that thigh, get something under there so that you're outer thigh contacts the mat. Might be you just need this much space, that much padding. 
you're going to come forward into your soup diversion. Now, many people question, where should I, how should that foot go in front? And many people say, well, if you're not flexing that foot and bringing that shin parallel to the front of the mat, you're not doing the pose. That's a very small portion of the population that's knee torsion and hip dish torsion does that. So you could have your foot anywhere all the way up to tucked in toward the groin or out in the position that we were talking about that's parallel to the edge of the mat. But here's how you check it out. You still need to have that leg grounded and you need to have the other hip flexor, the back left one, reaching toward the earth, not popped up. So I'll see a lot of times I'll see a person, they're all the way up here, but they're all the way laying over here and this is all the way up in the sky. So I would prefer to have the real stretch happening, pigeon, kapatasana, that thigh down, hip flexor down, buttocks trying to be even across the top. Might be a little bit up, but trying to be even. Move the chest forward and lengthen. Now you could always, this is, feels yummy, put a block underneath that forehead. Maybe that feels good. Maybe you have your hands underneath your forehead. Maybe you have arms stretched out. Maybe you're turning your head to one side. All good. Just find a position that you feel yummy with in pigeon. And pigeon is one of those where we would stay there for quite a while in pigeon pose. It's one of those big soaking poses like Prazerita, like Lizard, like all the Upavishtas, the open leg position. So it's something we can soak. And then slowly working it back up just to get into it is a big soak. All right, coming back up. And if you're having trouble getting that leg back, then you know, whoo, you were tighter in that outer thigh. So let's rock it out. See how you feel there. Tuck your toes and tread it out. Find your down dog and tread it out. And then let's lift up that left foot. So you're lifting the left foot to the sky. You're bringing the knee in. And you try to get it kind of behind where that left wrist is. And then you're pressing down through that outer thigh. And um, I uh, am a year out of a surgery right now and I have to say that I started using the block and then pads and then smaller and smaller and smaller till I got that nice uh, pigeon contact with the mat going and then you want to look at this side you want to look at your right side that your right side comes down then walking the hands out maybe coming just to your and you check your foot your foot should not be in some arbitrary torqued position. I see a lot of people say, oh, flex foot, flex foot, because it's gonna pre protect the knee. Uh, no, not so much. Let your foot relax. Keep your knee in a position where it's not feeling compromised. So if your foot is in some weird position that makes your knee feel like it's pinching it, come out or pad up. Come forward. Press down. Maybe doing that thing where you put your whole your head on your hands. Maybe you do the position where you put a block underneath. And as you breathe, you're trying to lengthen your spine and come over the front of that leg and just lengthen, lengthen. You might be laying all the way flat and taking your head, maybe turn it from one side to the other. Whatever you do on the one side, try to do it the same on the other. And if the body doesn't want to do it and you need to modify up a little bit or come out a little bit, take note. That's where your body's trying to tell you, ooh, am I the same on both sides? Do I need some extra TLC on one side? So I try to do like my head going to the other side, maybe moving my head to the other side on that, on that side of pigeon. All right, now walk it back up. And again, you could hold your pigeons longer and practice them for a longer period of time. Okay, so now let's bring it to back to tabletop. Tabletop is basically our in-between transition pose. Tuck your toes, it's a very handy pose. Move back up into downward facing dog. Tread out your downward facing dog. Big breaths. And now we're gonna come into a child's pose again. So come down, child's pose back, just for a moment. And then we're gonna come up again and roll over onto your back. And as you come onto your back, Hug your knees into your chest, rock from side to side. Maybe take a little tabletop to a little chi uh, happy baby. This is happy baby. Sukha Balasana, happy baby. 
All right, now let's bring down our right leg and keep our left leg up. And you, this is really nice. You can do this with a strap also. Um, take your foot out to the, you put, throw a strap over that, take your foot out while you're reclining. So your supine version of taking the foot out to the side. So you're a abducting or abducting your leg and working to open that groin a little bit, but keep the right buttock down as you do this. Otherwise, you're just peeling up the right buttocks and cheating for that leg. So you, the leg, for most people, most people's legs are not gonna come down and touch the ground if they're not cheating. There are some who have very, very open round hip dishes and the, the, they will, those individuals will have their leg. And if they practiced it over and over, be careful with that though. If you destabilize a joint too much, if you come too much into the, I have to move my leg. I can't tell you how many dancers I've talked to having to achieve a certain look to a pose, but it really wasn't right in their particular body for their genetics. And that could, could destabilize the body and later on it causes issues. Okay, bring it up, hug it in, bring the head up, bring both knees up, squeeze in, lift up pike. Exhale, head down, rock a little side to side. Stretch out that left leg, lift up through the right. Again, you can put a strap on it. And let's open it, abduct it. See if it feels different. See if one leg, if, what, if there's a big variance, if there's a big difference between the two, that's gonna really tell you something. That's really, really an indicator that something is super tight. And then that might affect your hip height, your top of your hip height, how you feel in your low back and your lumbar spine. A lot of different things to check here. So when we're checking in with yin, with our body's feedback, it's to kind of look at all the angles and planes of our body and see where are we at in that? Can we be honest with the pose? Do we think we have to drop the foot down so the butt comes completely up? If we practice with being smart in mind, with being open to realizing that our bodies all have variations our bodies all have a lot of different variances, then we will find so much space for movement. If we practice with just, we gotta get, look like that, that's when we come up with the most injuries. Bring our foot back up, bring your knee in. Slide the other leg in, bring both feet down this time. All right, take it to a side to side, windshield wipe. And then if you have your blocks, if you don't, if you have a bolster or some pillows, you can use those too. But if you have your block, we're gonna do a bridge that's supported. I love this pose. The, the, I like to use the top edge of the block, but you could use the flat end of the block or a pillow underneath, or you could do the top end of it. If you have a big back bend naturally, and it feels yummy, but whatever you're doing here, you're gonna come up, engage, pubic bone comes up in your bridge, thighs lift, feet are parallel, knees are parallel, so you're not pulling them into the inside. You're not letting them go to the outside. Your feet are in full contact. You're square, you're parallel. You're gonna put this up underneath your sacral area. I like that height. Sometimes I take it up to the end, but this isn't about, ooh, I went 10 feet farther. We call that the level 92 people. It isn't about that. You'll find that they get hurt over and over again because for them it's about, I gotta compete. I gotta, even if they're competing with themselves. So here's your bridge supported, arms down, long spine, head neutral, feet grounded, long deep breaths. Find peace in your body. You need to be relaxed in the low back and the hips. And just let that block take up the weight of your body. Even if you mush, if you're on pillows and you mush slightly into it, just, just pile those pillows up until you feel supported here. Have a little baby back bend. It's a wonderful way to relieve low back stress, and especially if that's where you carry your stress or if you have to sit at a desk or a computer. A lot of people are more at their computer than they ever were, and that can cause strain in the low back, up the spine, and into the shoulders. So broaden your shoulders, relax your shoulders down. If you need a pillow or a soft, small um, spacer underneath your head or your upper back, you can do that too. And then let's lift up, take out our blocks, and lower our feet and stretch into that big morning stretch, reaching the arms over the head. So from your navel to your fingertips stretching, from your navel to your toes stretching, lengthen your spine, big deep breaths. 
big long deep breaths and then hug that right knee into the chest tuck up again maybe adding that little bit of emphasis with core lifting up that left leg maybe not maybe having it stay on the floor maybe tapping a little bit tapping here tucking in tapping tapping deep in the breath deep in the breath and then lay on back foot comes down turn the knee take it all the way over and looking over your right shoulder, opening your chest. So this is a spinal twist. Now your knee, you might be sensitive in your IT band, you might be tight, you might have to put your foot down. You might take a block, show you the block one. You could put a block up high even, to kind of, if this is super tight, maybe here. But I want you to feel relaxed, or maybe the knee is just coming down. Wherever that is, I want you to feel relaxed, but you're feeling a huge stretch down that IT, but your shoulder comes down. So if to get the knee to come down, your shoulder pops up, draw the shoulder back down and come where you need to go, or padded, for your twist. Okay, bring the knee back in, tuck it in, navel comes in, your Uddiyana Bandha here, your belly lock. Exhale down, wiggle it out a little, bend the legs out, bend your knees, tuck them in, bring it into a little belly tuck, abs, abs, abs. <laughs> maybe stretching out that right, maybe tapping the floor and lifting, feet are active, head is up. So the one thing you wanna learn about ab curls or any kind of core work, your head's like this big bowling ball of weight. Your neck's a stem. If you let your head drop when you're doing your core work, you're gonna have extra stress on the back of that neck. And you don't want your cervical spine to feel stressed. Okay, hold up, lay it down, take the knee, bring it over to the right side, opening up, looking to your back hand, taking deep breaths, maybe putting the knee on a block, maybe it's different on one side, again, check that out, see if one IT band is a lot tighter. So if your IT band, it comes from the top of your hip down the side of your thigh into your knee, if your IT band is super tight. It's going to affect your low back because it connects and, and it works with your psoas. So it's gonna, it's gonna maybe pull your low back or maybe your knees. That's usually the most primary that, that happen that we see most often. So you wanna make sure you're you know maybe rolling it out, stretching it out, doing as many stretches as you need to for your IT bands. And maybe you're opening your shoulder and looking over that back shoulder. Two more breaths. And then come back to center. Bring your knees in. Rock them. Bring your feet down, side to side. Put a little windshield wiper here. As I'm talking, little blooms are falling off in a gentle breeze onto my face. <laughs> I know, face touching at this time. <laughs> I'm with me. I'll, I'll wipe down after. <laughs> Slide your feet out. I always think that yoga, we have to always have a little sense of humor. We're gonna take our Shavasana now. And when we take Shavasana, we clear our mind of all those monkey thoughts. You can put blocks underneath you. You can put a pad under your head. Again, you can stay here for longer if you want to or have the time to. Let's just go through just a little bit of Shavasana time. So clearing your mind, drawing into your center, relaxing your face, relaxing your eyes, relaxing around the temples of your face, the back of your head, relaxing your jawline, Begin to take your breaths very deeply, in and out, ujjayi. And as you take your inhale, you want to expand your rib cage upward. You want to feel the breadth of those, the lung capacity. And then as you exhale, you reluctantly exhale. You exhale in a very long, slow way. So your inhale becomes a long, 
full inhale, but your exhale becomes twice as long. So you have this one to two ratio of twice as long with your exhale. And as you do that, it changes the brainwave patterns and it helps us to go into that REM, sort of REM pattern that we have at night, the REM sleep pattern in our brains. And so as you're here, just release and relax. Let your toes relax, your calves relax, your thighs and your buttocks. Let your fingers relax, your rib cage, the back of your head. Take long, deep breaths here. And as you take those long, deep breaths, let that breath just flow over you from the crown of your head to the edge of your toes. Release any distractions. Release any stressors. Draw in golden light. Draw in positive energy. Draw in that link to the universe and all the positive goodness around you. As you exhale, let all of the stresses, any last distractions, any negativity release. And then as you feel the Shavasana, begin to go deeper inside. Begin to feel yourself floating. So now it's just all about the breath, as if your breath had circled around your whole body and like a magic carpet, you were hovering in the breath, suspended by the breath, suspended without time, suspended in the moment. Continue to breathe in and out through the nostrils, ujjayi breathing and feel the breath from the belly center all the way down to the toes. And then from the belly center all the way up through the crown. And make the working the breath around your body. Maybe starting at the crown of the head and go down the side of your right side of your ear and your shoulder, around your arms around your leg on the right side, and then up and around to the left side leg, and then up and around to the left side arm, and then up into the crown of the head. And just feel that. Feel the length of your spine. Feel the suspension of any tightness. Letting it go, letting it fall away from you. And then as you stay here and as you release and relax, take deeper breaths. Make sure everything has been let go. Draw in the positivity, the power of you, your it factor. And then when you're ready to come out of your Shavasana, wiggle your toes and fingers. And then really gently let the knees soften and bend. And then ease your way over to your sideline position. You could always stay in your Shavasana longer if you'd like to or put on your favorite song. And when we come over to our sideline position, you want to keep neutral with your spine so that you can continue to keep that beautiful Shavasana feeling with you as you leave and go off to wherever you're going in your day, even if it's back to a desk or back to the phones or whatever, your chores. And then curling back up, moving back up, coming back up onto your bottom. So you wanna do that really slow and gentle, coming back onto your root. And then as you're on your root, come to your hands to heart center. As the hands are in heart center, we're gonna bow over our hands and we're going to say our ending namaste together. So take a huge breath, inhale, thumbs on your sternum. Exhale and we say together, namaste. Inhale back up to the sky, deep breath. Exhale, let it go. Namaste. 